Hello everyone. Welcome to Harp Tuesday. It's actually Wednesday on March 30th, 2011. And this is the start of a in-depth look at Gabriel Fauré's Impromptu. So this is the first one of, of several episodes I'll be doing talking about this piece. It's a wonderful piece. Uh, I first played it in 95, I guess. So almost 16 years ago and performed it many times since then. It's, it's the type of piece that is, I just find very satisfying physically to play. There's some great, some great passages where you're just, you get to play stuff fast and loud and, and show off a little bit and it's fun that way. And it, fits quite nicely under the hand. It's, it's a very effective piece. So it's, yes, it definitely makes its way onto many of my programs. And I talked a little bit about the opening chord section in a episode that, that I did about learning to play broken chords. Um, I may be able to put a link right here in this video to that section. And if not, or even if I do, I'll also have a link to that in the text. And if you click more info on this video on YouTube, you'll be able to go to that little section where I talk about the opening in terms of, in terms of sort of the technique, the, the little chords. Now this opening though is very important because it sets us up for the rest of the piece. We hear this tune, which we're going to hear quite a few times and it's a well-played opening, just gets the piece off to a great start. And of course, if it's not so well played, then it's, it, yeah, it just kind of ruins the effect a little bit. When you first start working on this, of course, you're going to have much less of an idea of the piece as a whole. Then when you, you've played it a while, you, you've worked through it and, and you get, start to get a picture of the piece. So as well as working on the technique of these chords, so that making sure that making sure that they're even and you're hearing all the notes in there and of course, as well as that technique, there's also something to think about in terms of the sound. What I want is just a really rich sound that I don't want it to sound tinny. I don't want it to sound uh, frail or anything. I just want this, oh, this warmth, this ooh, great big, beautiful chord. So as well as all of that stuff, What's really important is to think about the shape of these, what are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight and, a, and the downbeat, um, these eight and the, and the downbeat bars, the shape of that opening phrase. Because what can happen sometimes is that we get caught up in playing the notes and, and it's hard and we're working on all this great technique stuff. But really all this technique is there is to serve the greater purpose of portraying what we want to do with this piece of music and you know how this piece of music speaks to us what 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 we want to say with it so it's really important in a section like this to just think about the overall shape and that may change i know uh, i'm sure over those 15 years when i've played it Sometimes I'll play it this way, sometimes I'll play it that way, sometimes I like it faster, sometimes I like it slower. Um, I would highly recommend listening to some recordings of this, in particular Marcel Grangini recording, but just to get an idea of what other people have done with this. You can play the top note, so you get... hear what's happening there in terms of the tune and of course also playing these chords flat helps that way as well you 
because we, we don't get caught up with um, the, you know, all, all the sound in the same way. So to, to, my, to my ear, what it wants is it's got these several phrases. So we start out... That's one phrase, and it's got a little bit of it, a little bit of a build, and a little bit of drop, and build, and drop. So we kind of go, mm -hmm. and and then we start again. Right? And then where we get this D uh, natural, it's not that I take extra time necessarily before playing that, but it's sort of a surprise that, oh, here we're actually shifting into something different. It's a, and, and now we're going to start, we're going to start climbing. We're, the volume is going to start increasing even more. And so just anticipate that, have fun with that little change, that harmonic change. And then it you know it builds and then it gradually dissipates now i don't want to do too much with this i i want it to be subtle i want it to to flow it's, it's just the opening statement this isn't um this isn't the type of piece where we want to just be really schmaltzy so it needs to be it needs to be subtle we're, we're doing things with the rise and the fall and and, and and the phrasing, you know, space between the notes, stretching this note a little bit, stretching that note, the, the spacing a little bit, but it can't be too overdone. So th that's th those are some of my thoughts on that opening. But again, I think what's most important is for you to to do what you want to do, what 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 that music tells you to do, and and but just think about it. So don't just play these chords and 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 try to make them, you know, try to make them loud and even and warm sounding, but also just think about how the how the music should be played. So then we move on to these little these little um, nothing much to add there. Definitely, if you can, so we get you can play this and muffle sort of at the same time because of course conveniently your hands ready there from this harmonic to go and muffle getting rid of that sound and and still be there in time to so we get so we get so you can do that you can do that afterwards or you can even grab some of it be just before playing. So so play around with that. Um, of course, you don't want it, you don't want it to be sort of staccato sounding, but you can grab some of that sound just before you. Uh, we got a. You know, grabbing some grabbing some of these lower notes that haven't been played but are ringing with sympathetic vibration before playing this. And again, you can take a little bit of time as we wind our way down. Nothing, it's not the end of the piece. We don't want to go nuts, but just a nice, you know, the music's, that's what, it, that's sort of what it's telling us to do is, is just taking a little bit of time. We got these, etc. Nothing too in, important to say about those. And then we get this little. And you should approach it at least that slowly. You know, obviously, when you're first learning it, even slower. And turn it into a little exercise. And because it's a little, it looks a little bit difficult and you're hopping up and down and all around with the left hand. haven't 
haven't um haven't warmed up today but uh, so and it's not going to play a tune is it um yeah nothing too complicated about this it's just a matter of um it's just a matter of trying to of taking it really slowly and making sure that it's as even as possible places where there's a risk that the left hand will buzz this jumping up here to grab this a there's a risk of buzzing I'm going to talk about buzzing in a moment so just be aware of that and take it slowly and then we get to these 30 second notes uh, and this is the first of well, I guess we can maybe count the opening as well, but this is one of these sections where it's a great, great place to turn it into an exercise. And uh, I know there are some people, exercises exercises can sort of be a issue for some people. Some people will say you should, you know, they're, they're advocates of practicing, doing tons of exercises, say on the piano, five hours of exercises the fastest and most efficient way to build a good technique. And on the other side, there are people who say, well, but that maybe doesn't produce the most beautiful playing because you're, you're all, you're just, all you're doing are these exercises. There's no, there's no soul to that. There's no, where's the music? Um, and I know certainly when you're learning an instrument for the first time, it's maybe a little bit easier when you're learning a second instrument because you can see the utility in trying to master this instrument as efficiently as possible. And also you have the experience of playing, being able to play music, being able to sit down and play a piece of music. So you don't necessarily need that experience with that instrument right then. But when you're learning an instrument, when this is your first instrument, or when you're, when you're sort of learning music for the first time, you wanna play music, right? You, you don't necessarily, it, probably for most of us, our hearts don't call out for us to sit down and spend five hours doing exercises. We want to sit down and be able to play this Chopin that we've heard or this Beethoven or Bach, whatever. So there's also, I think, a great utility in, in just playing music. And so one of the things that you can do that's very helpful is to create exercises from the music that you're playing because those are really the best types of exercises because you take something that's giving you problems or that's harder than the surrounding piece that's this you know everything's fine and oh we get this little section that's hard turn it into an exercise and you can see oh yeah this is worthwhile because by doing this i'm improving this part in this piece that I'm trying to learn and this piece sounds better. I'm, this music that I'm trying to play gets better. So this is a great place to turn it into a little exercise. And the exercise that I like to do, and I, and I do this every time that I come back to it, is, and I'll talk about this in several other instances, instances as well, is to play it through once, just slowly and, and as evenly as possible. And then play it uh, with a dotted or maybe maybe a triplet rhythm so that say we start 
with uh, fast slow. <laughs> is it helps build a sense of strength in each finger and build a sense of evenness so that uh, it's kind of weird maybe because obviously that's not even it's 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 got this sort of swing kind of feeling but when we just play it it can be easy to get to just sort of start hearing some of the notes in the stronger positions and lose some notes inside maybe a weaker finger or just that position's a little awkward that fingering's a little awkward so by changing this emphasis it helps make sure that every finger and every note is really there and really strong <laughs> Of course, there, there, there's there's a tune going on here too. There's music going on as, as we get up to the top, um, and be aware of that and do a little bit. You can do a little bit of there again, subtle, uh, nothing crazy. But uh, yeah, so that's something to think about when working through that section. Then we get these low chords. They're really quite low with the right hand way down below middle C. And there's a lot of opportunity to buzz down here. So I, I mentioned I was going to talk about buzzing earlier. And I remember working on this. So at that point, I would have been playing for five years, I guess. And my, you know, my technique was still, still growing. And I remember that the advice that my teacher gave me, that one of the things that sticks to mind is just in terms of avoiding buzzing, the answer is not to buzz. And it sounds, uh, that sounds kind of silly, right? It's of course you don't want to buzz. That's what we're trying not to do, but how do we not buzz? And, and there are th some things to think about in terms of approaching, approaching from above, getting away from the string and approaching from above. But in many ways, it's just, just don't do it. And what that means is, say you're having problems with a particular transition. Maybe, yeah, there we are. Maybe this is, maybe you keep nicking four in there. Well, just take it really slowly, sit down. Oh, I hear a buzz there. Let's see. Oh, no. Okay. Now let's see if I can get the four in again here. And taking it really slowly and just getting your hand used to the shape and the angle that it needs to come from in order to avoid buzzing. So this is something that's mainly applicable to someone who's sort of in the same area of, of their their progress as I was when I first learned this, that where you're you're still working on on parts of your technique and this is a great that is it's like one, two, three, four, basically four bars, but it's a great place to just go through this and it's, it's 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 painstakingly slow right it can be it can be very annoying but just you know if 
something buzzes. Maybe something's buzzing in there. What, what, how, how can I how can I position my fingers so that it won't buzz? And and like I said, I can suggest approaching from above. But really, it's a matter of finding that space, that point in space that grabs you this string without nicking that other one. And partly that's just a matter of lots of time and practice and being able to your hand knowing where to go, exactly where to go because there's not a huge margin of error with these big strings which are you know vibrating a lot more than than these little guys up here so so yeah just just don't buzz just just take time to just go through that really slowly as many times as you need to to train yourself to be able to on the whole on the whole, right? I mean, it's hard. You're going to buzz it occasionally, but to just make it so that you have the best shot at grabbing these chords without without buzzing. So it's been 20 minutes already. I think I will leave it at that. And next week we'll we'll go through this little this little noodling section here, and maybe look at the first two pages of the uh, sort of the faster, exciting bit. And uh, in the meantime, I will see you next week. Cheers.